Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a video about Google's latest press event, introducing a full lineup, I will say, of brand new products. Now, I will start off this video by saying I'm overly underwhelmed. So if you're a fanboy and can look past what actually happened today, watch on. Otherwise, you probably should leave. And I say that only because even though I am a tremendous Google fan, today really felt a lot like the Surface event and Apple's event. It was underwhelming, unfortunately. So you can see some of the products that were introduced right there. Um, we've got the new uh, Google Hub, as well as, of course, the new Pixel, which looks exactly like the leaks. The new Pixel XL3 has that hideous notch that makes you think you've got a bootleg iPhone, which is what I feared, and, of you know, that has become a truth. And then the Slate, which looks great, but I question what they're thinking. Who's going to buy this? Uh, it tops out at $1,600. US I'll get to that through the course of the video. Let's start with the Pixel 3. So I had a lot, well, some hopes, I will say, not high hopes, because for those of you that follow my channel, you know that I own the Note 9. It's my daily driver, and I made the right choice in my mind now, without hesitation, after seeing what Apple brought to the table and now the Pixel uh, XL and just regular Pixel 3. No question. For me, first of all, even though we've got an AMOLED display here and Google's going to back up all of your photos for life and videos for life, that is the life of your device, that is. Um, and at some point, they'll probably cut that off too. And you have wireless charging. You're working with the same Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, 845 processor that you have in the Note 9. Yes, you have Pi going for you, but so does the previous generation Pixel XL2, as well as the original Pixel. Um, they have taken away some features, which I think is incredibly wrong. But when it comes to, you know, the software experience, sure, it's going to be great. That's what Google is known for, very similarly to what Apple is known for. And that is the glaring similarity besides the fact that we've got that notch and that chin. So... 6.3-inch display on their, you know, XL3. And I'm going to show you the specs. Uh, the wireless charging, none, you know, that they didn't have in the first generation uh, Pixel X, uh, Pixel and Pixel XL, and that bothered me. Uh, the new dock is cool, but nothing game-changing. It turns the phone essentially into a Google Assistant, which is nice. But let's go to the actual specifications. Because... You already know what you're getting with the software. Uh, the quickest way to getting updates is, of course, with Google. And there you see the two diagrams of the Pixel in terms of size and the Pixel XL right there off the top. Then, as we move to it, of course, as I mentioned, you're getting uh, version 9, which is Pi, and Google Assistant baked in to the operating system, of course. 5.5-inch uh, Full HD display or a 6.3-inch uh, they're both OLED QHD Plus display. You can see the 523 uh, PPI versus the 443. Uh, of course, both have Corning Gorilla Glass 5, just like every other flagship phone on the market. HDR support. But, you know, beyond that, knowing that you're getting a smaller battery, which you are, I mean, here is the camera-related information for those of you that are uh, wondering. 12-megapixel, dual-pixel camera uh, on the rear, 8-megapixel on the front. Uh, so they're not going along the same lines as Apple and uh, Samsung. And in terms of the aperture, you see it there. Uh, you're not getting uh, 4K at 60p from what I'm seeing here, only 30p. So that's inherently already a downgrade. But this is where things get really ugly. Let's get to those specs. So I mentioned the Snapdragon 845, 4 gigs of RAM. This smells like the Apple event, um, where it's 3 or 4, depending on whether or not you're going with the excess or the excess to the max. And then, yes, we've got <clears throat> a wide variety of colors. Clearly white, just black or not pink, um, which... You know, this is not a bad thing, but uh, battery, okay? 
look at the battery size. I mean, I don't know what to say about this. So with the XL, you're at 3430, which is, I mean, this is all last year's tech, basically. And, you know, that's what a lot of people thought about the Note 9 when it launched with the Snapdragon 845. They were like, that's an old chip. Why should I get excited? Guess what? This is how business works, unfortunately, folks. You, we don't always get the cake, but we often tend to eat it in spite of not getting the cake we wanted. And that's exactly what's happening here. So if you're, I mean, they have fast charging, they have wireless charging, whoop de doo but, and of course Type-C, but the battery capacity on both of these phones is paltry at best. I mean, this number for the XL is basically the same as the Note 8 from last year. And no pen integration here, obviously. Uh, you're going to just have to, again, live or die by the fact that, well, at least I have Android updates pushed to me immediately. Because that is, you know, that's always been the calling card of Nexus and now Pixel devices. Uh, the problem is they started road mapping. And once they started doing that, well, it defeated the purpose of getting value uh, for your money. Uh, beyond that, I can't really tell you a lot. To, there isn't a lot to brag about with this phone launch. It's, uh, you know, this, the Pixel XL screen is basically the same one you're getting with the iPhone uh, 10XS. So Samsung Note 9 still takes the cake on, you know, the best display in the business for its form factor. You're just simply not going to beat it. It's not going to happen. And uh, now pricing, I haven't touched on. This is where they didn't gouge as much as Apple, um, but, you know, they're still very expensive. So you see the Pixel XL starts at uh, 799 Remember, storage is fixed. This is another thing that makes me feel like we're looking at Apple, an Apple-esque experience. And I didn't used to think of any of Google's products in this fashion. I mean, yes, when they took away expandable storage, I was disappointed uh, in tablets, but and and obviously in the OS, they made it very clear they want it to be internal storage only, which was basically uh, ad adopting an already successful system from Apple. Uh, but to have price points like this, $900 is your starting price point for the XL. Let's take a look at that. So if I go unlocked and I go with the black version, or is it just black? 64 and 128. There's no 256. There's no 512. So really, what are we getting here? I'm going to reiterate. I mean, I have a 128 gig original Pixel XL that, yes, doesn't have this screen size, but has the same software experience, except they will nerf, as I've already told you, several of the key things that differentiate this, which I feel is very Apple-esque. Even though Apple hasn't done that exactly, um, it's, it's learning. You know, how can we make as much money as possible? And that's exactly what the Pixel lineup this year, this refresh, the third gen, in my opinion, represents. You're looking at a phone that is purely designed around how can we make our margins as good as possible and with as little design effort or design sense as possible. And that's exactly what the Pixel 3 as well as the Pixel uh, XL uh, 3 give you. I mean, don't get me wrong. The software experience I saw from the, the keynote, it, it looks fantastic, but it's also, again, I'm going to reiterate, the exact same software, 95% of which you will get with two phones that are one and two years older, the Pixel XL and XL2. Now, if I move away from the Pixel, which I'm going to, if uh, my tablet lets me. I had it. I should be using the pen. So let's take a look at the tablet. Now, the Slate, when I saw it, I said, wow, finally, Google's bringing back a tablet. This is going to be good. And, you know, there's a lot of crap on here that I could show you um, from a marketing perspective uh, that Google's trying to launch as I'm having issues with my own tablet. But at least my tablet's the actual age of what they're 
they're selling you new in the Pixel <laughs> XL, uh, Pixel 3 and Pixel XL 3, because uh, this is the Tab S3. This is not the Tab S4. doesn't have the latest and greatest of everything, but still works perfectly well. So I want to go to the specs on this, because when I saw it, I got excited. I said, finally, they're back in the tablet game. And then when I realized that this is an attempt at a Surface Pro competitor, my depression set in. And that's because essentially what you're getting is something that looks just like the Surface Pro, weighs almost exactly the same amount as the Surface Pro, and there is your pricing structure. Check it out. So you've got a Celeron model, which the Surface Pro 6 does have, starting at $599, then $799 for the M3 version, the Celeron model being the Surface Go, by the way. Let me make myself abundantly clear. And I don't care how great the display is on this. I mean, the resolution seems good, 3000 by 2000, I believe. Uh, and they're claiming it's a molecular display. Fantastic. I don't care. This now, again, reminds me of Apple. When you start coming up with marketing names, just show me the money, baby. Show me the Super AMOLED. And there's a reason Samsung is keeping it on lockdown. Everyone else has to go to LG. Um, we're not getting it here. It's that simple. You're just not getting it. And so, okay, so this is the Surface Go. But it doesn't run Windows, and it's 600 bucks. Maybe that's the most compelling tablet of this lineup with 4 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage or 64 gigs of storage. Again, not expandable. If you decide to up it to the $800 price point, which puts you in real Surface Pro world, and again, you will have to pay $200 for the keyboard accessory, $100 for the pen accessory. Sound familiar? Even more expensive than what Microsoft is doing. And these are all based around Intel chips, just like the, the Surface Pro 6. So you have an M3 option, which I believe with the Surface Pro 6 starts at 750, 50 less than this. Eight gigs of RAM, fine, okay. We step up to the next one. A thousand bucks gets you the Core i5, eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. Now, I don't know whether they're using NVMEs. I'm assuming that they are. Uh, but I don't know for a fact. I haven't dug that deep yet because, quite frankly, I'm not impressed. And then if you really want to blow the load, at 1600 US, you can get the Core i7 version with 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Now, I don't know what to tell you about any of these because this is the next part. It's running Chrome's operating system, and they're calling it a two-in-one. So to me, that means you're getting a, a desktop Chrome OS experience and then also a mobile OS experience. So what are you getting? The most expensive glorified e-reader and like email and content consumption tablet ever made? That's what it appears. Um, the beauty of the Surface Pro is that it can be a computer it, and it can also be a tablet. Granted, not as good a, a, a tablet as it can be a computer because Windows 10 is not optimized. Even if you love their S mode, it's not really a better platform for tablet content consumption than Android or iOS. But this pitch, I can't buy for a moment that we're going to be working $1,600 for an Android tablet even if it has all of the specifications of a Windows 10 powerhouse like the Surface Pro 6 top-of-the-line model that I have coming in to review, which is priced at $1,900 with you know, similar specifications, the one that I have coming is essentially this, but with 512 gigs of storage. But it's an actual computer, and, I, and I'm not even sure if this is a quad-core 8th gen, but since the entire 8th gen was about quad-core, I imagine it is. I don't think they made a dual-core mobile 8th gen processor, so we'll see. Um, but again, operating system, Chrome OS. So we're getting a, a $1,600 Pixelbook tablet 2-in-1? That's what it seems like, and that to me is a head-scratcher. I said this about the Surface Go. Here I am now saying it, unfortunately, about what Google has to offer. 12.3-inch display. That's the exact same size, of course, as the Surface Pro. Um, the resolution, again, looks good, but it's an LCD, just like the Surface Pro. Uh, this makes me like this, you know, the Galaxy Tab S4 a lot more, and it's a lot less expensive, even if the starting price point is $599. On the memory, I already went over it. 
4, 8, or 16, 32, or 64 on internal. And then if you're in the i5 or i7 world, I mean, really fixed specifications. They're keeping things so tight, and that's because they want to make sure that they make that money, baby. And this is, again, learning from Apple, learning from Microsoft. How can we make money with very little risk? And that's what I see in uh, this product. Uh, 8 megapixel camera, I don't really care because, again, it's just... If this thing had a 4K display, OLED, I mean, I, I this would be drool-worthy, maybe, but still not, because it would still be, again, unable to do what something like a Surface Pro 6 could do, so I could never recommend it to anyone for the money. It's just really that simple. Even if it has 4K output through the Type-C port, I, all of these things, Types, you know, oh man, what are they doing? And $200 for the keyboard. I mean, come on, the kickstand integrated in the Surface Pro is better. Now, let's wrap up with the products that aren't complete crap. And when I say complete crap, I'm not, really, I'm not trying to be that harsh. It's really just a matter of what actually, in my opinion, was impressive versus not. I'm not even seeing the hub here. So let's try going home. And I'm sure the hub will be right there. I mean, the Pixel Stand, self-explanatory, I mentioned. But the Google Home Hub, I actually did pre-order. Here's the light at the end of the tunnel, if you want to call it that. And as you can see, essentially, it is Google's answer to Amazon's Echo Show. Finally. Now, Lenovo's made one, but this was long overdue. This I picked up. Yes, I have a buddy who said to me, wow, it is so ugly. But the same can be said for basically all of the, the products that Google launched today. I don't know what's going on uh, when it comes to their design sense, um, who is in charge, who's getting paid for this. This kind of reminded me of when Mercedes started putting LCD screens in their cars. They were literally just gluing screens, you know, sticking out of the dash. And I was like, that's not design. They just glued an LCD screen. But I still ordered one because at $150, the promise of what it can do is important to me in what I have, which is a smart home, a rebuilt one. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, you know, I'm sure that they're making a solid amount of money as I move the tablet there on this, but I still think there's a lot to like about the Google uh, Hub. I did not mean to touch that. I meant to go to the specifications. So here you go. Tech specs loading up. So essentially, you know, the speakers at the back, you can have this at an end table, you can have this in the kitchen, and it'll do exactly what your current Google Home Assistant does, but with a visual cue. And also, if you have the Hello Doorbell, which I don't, I wish I did, I have the Ring Doorbell Pro, which is inferior, but still competent. Um, someone rings the doorbell, instantly this thing populates with who's at the door. Of course, you can control your whole Nest ecosystem, which I do have complete security as well as uh, climate and safety, you know, CO2, smoke detectors uh, throughout the house. So this is a perfect device for me. Unfortunately, this was the only perfect device for me. And I would say, oh, I could get the Lenovo. It's a nicer looking product. And maybe that'll be the case. Maybe I will end up getting the Lenovo when the price comes down. Right now, this is less expensive than the Lenovo. And I expect it to have better support because it's coming directly from Google. But not really much else to tell you about this other than that it's a Google Assistant with a screen and a camera. And it's great to have. Um, again, this was an underwhelming event. I wish I had more to tell you, uh, more positive news. But what this reinforces is that the Note 9, again, for me personally... I'm happy I got it. I do not regret it. It is still the best phone on the market. Uh, highest capacity on the battery. Uh, since the Snapdragon 845 is the standard of measure right now, I still have you know, a best-in-class processor. Eventually, it'll be outdone. And I'm not comparing Apple because they do live in a bubble. You know That Bionic A12 is in nothing else. Of course, it'll be in the Surface Pros. Don't get me wrong. That's... So what? That's how Apple rolls. I got, I got you. Don't worry. But you can't put it in any other operating system to benchmark it and do anything other than synthetic benchmarking, which is toilet paper rubbing toilet paper, which equals crap, trash, toilet paper. 
Anyway, so I hoped, I had high hopes for this event, but unfortunately the leaks were true and the only surprises we got were expensive gadgets other than the one I just showed you, which probably a lot of people will view as expensive uh, right now, this hub, and not a hell of a lot of innovation. So Google, do a reboot. Apple, do a reboot. Back to the drawing table. Microsoft, same deal. Nobody is, Samsung's not even getting a pass. They just did the best of, of pushing the envelope in a year of zero innovation. That's really my best way of, of surmising this video is that we all know what the holiday season now looks like when it comes to smartphones, tablets, and computers that are tablets. We didn't really get a major jump. Nothing happened that was a game changer. And I really wish that I was telling you about a game changer, but there just, there isn't. Um, you know, the, the Pixelbook, Chromecast, I mean, it is what it is. What am I going to tell you about that? <laughs> I mean, I'm not a Pixelbook fan. I know a lot of people love it, but the Chrome OS, I mean, talk about early adopter fee. Once software developers really start jumping on board with, Chrome as an operating system, get back to me. Until then, I can't recommend to anyone that watches this channel an investment in a Pixel Book just because of build quality and battery life and that it carries, you know, Android, or excuse me, their Google Suite um, so well because the Google Suite can be carried well on a lot of Windows based machines as well as alternative Android tablets. And, you know, Chromecast. What, what is there for me to say about that as well? I mean, HDR, I would love it. Um, I don't believe we support 4K HDR here yet. I'm going to just double check to make sure I'm not crazy. But I'm fairly certain that we don't. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think that we do. So, I mean, Chromecast is still a must-have. But no 4K HDR is... Is, is a have not, I'm pretty sure, in this case. I just refreshed the page ac accidentally. I promise next time I will use the S Pen. At any rate, that pretty much sums things up. You know, I wish Google had done more. They had a lot of capability today. They could have, they were the last ones to show up. Save the best for last. Or in this case, prove to Apple users that your phone looks like a knockoff of the iPhone that's just less expensive, which kind of feeds the trolls who believe that Android is for people who can't afford Apple phones. The, those people who think that, by the way, are pathetic and know nothing. Sorry uh, to slander a group that has slandered the entire world and, and any educated human. But uh, if you think that Apple products are for people who can't afford them, then explain to me why I have never owned an iPhone because I could have Bought every version if I wanted to. They've just never delivered anything worth buying, in my opinion. Now, that's my opinion. I have very good friends, best friends, that in case, you know, certain case scenarios love Apple products. But this is not about financial, you know, what you can afford. This is about what you should buy. What do you need? What's going to make you happy? Not whether the logo is going to be a status symbol. And unfortunately, Seems like Google has kind of caught the fanboy disease. And Microsoft, you know, they've set a standard. Uh, I'm going off the scope a little bit, but they suffer from this as well now too. Uh, but not, you know, what I was just mentioning about people slandering those who use non-Apple products. Um, but there are people that think that way too when it comes to computers. Again, they know nothing. That's not surprising. You live in a bubble. It's easy to, you know, continue to feed your own ego, whatever you want to call it. Uh, misinformation is exactly that. Uh, the more knowledge you have, the better off you are. And trust me, if Apple products were the best, I'd be reviewing everything that they ever made. They simply aren't. Um, do they sell like they're the best? In many cases, they do. Thanks, Steve Jobs, for changing, you know, the the space, as I always say, but this kind of is what I think Steve Jobs always wanted, which is that the biggest possible competition fails. And I have to say, if 
you put the iPhone in XS 10 um, next to the Pixel XL 3, at least the iPhone isn't ugly. I'm going to go that far. You know, I was just speaking, speaking with a friend. At least the notch isn't as large. Um, I agree with that. Still doesn't mean that I would buy the Apple product, but my God, at least these phones are substantially less expensive than what Apple's offering. And at least they don't have the nerve to take away a gig of RAM if you go with the smaller, with the Pixel uh, standard rather than the XL. And at, I mean, they do have different battery sizes, but that's because they're different sized phones with one smaller, one larger display. Different battery size makes sense. Uh, but, and at least on top of all of that, they don't throw something like that XR, you know, a, a piece of garbage in 2018 that doesn't even deserve to exist at 750 where here you are starting at 799 uh, for the, you know, the Pixel. So I absolutely think the Pixel, if you, if you said to me, should I get the Pixel versus the XR? Yeah, get the Pixel. Don't even think about it. Grab that Pixel. I mean, neither has expandable storage. You know, I don't find either to be really compelling, but at least save some money because this year has been nothing but a contest for basically every manufacturer to see how long they can sit on their hands. And by that, mean, by that I mean do absolutely nothing to inspire or innovate, unfortunately. So wish I had better things to say. But it is what it is, folks. Um, I doubt I'll be reviewing any of these products. The Slate was really of most interest to me, but I would not buy one. So unless Google decides to send me one, um, they know I'm a YouTuber. They certainly make money off my channel, albeit I don't know how much. Um, if they want to send me one to review, fine. They've never sent me a thing to review, so I doubt this will be the first. Uh, but that is really the only thing of interest to me here. And But I'm still left scratching my head. With those internals, it looks like a Surface Pro, but it's not. And I'm sure there are people out there that are going to get Windows 10 working on it. That should be interesting. Um, and if that happens, you better believe I'll probably be sharing it with all of you. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.